a cool thing I, I noticed the other day. I think every one of us, um, uh, our, our lives are structured and arranged in a harmonious and beautiful and elegant way such that every day of our life has significance and actually the amount of time between one day and another day um, is actually symbolically significant. Our names have symbolic significance. Even if our parents didn't know what it was, God knows what it, uh, God knows what it is. So throughout scripture, we see that people have symbolically important ages or between the Exodus and the building of the temple, it's 480 years. That's 12 times 40, um, uh, uh, 12, uh, uh, generations. Um, and some people have looked at that and said, well, it seems like the biblical authors are just massaging history. Uh, this is evidence is not historical. But what if God really is managing the world? What if God is really ordaining um, uh, history? Hold on. Uh, what if God is really ordaining history through the Logos, through whom he rules all things? And because he's doing it through the Logos, Every historical moment is symbolically resonant. Um, then it would indicate that we're actually, when we're studying history, we're missing a lot of the significance. I think when you look at the amount of time between, so the 70 weeks of Daniel, uh, that's um, sev uh, um, 70 periods of seven years. It begins with the decree of Cyrus, I believe, and it ends in 33 AD, which is three years after the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, and it ends with the gospel going to the nations. Okay, I think that Revelation chapter 11 actually gives us an interpretation of what the last half of the 70th week is. That's why it says it's uh, three and a half days, and at the end of the 70th week, in those three and a half days, the Jewish church uh, of Jerusalem is martyred, and the Gentiles see what has happened and give glory to the God of heaven. God of heaven is the Gentile name for God, not only in the Near East, not only in the Bible, all across the world. That's why uh, he's the emperor of heaven in China. He's the heart of heaven in Mesoamerica. This is the Gentile name for God. They give glory to the God of heaven and they give glory to the God of heaven after the 7,000 are killed. 7,000 is the remnant of Israel. Uh, I have kept for myself 7,000 men who have not bent the knee to Baal, uh, uh, God says in uh, the book of Kings. And Paul quotes that in Romans 11. Um, uh, identifying the remnant in his own day with the remnant in that period. So the martyrdom of the Jewish remnant is the conduit by which glory is given to God by the nations. So that's the end of the 70th week. Um, now between the end of the 70th week, which remember is centered in the gospel going to the Gentiles and the Christianization of the Roman Empire, that is the legalization of Christianity, the recognition of the kingship of Jesus by the emperor himself is 40 weeks, exactly 40 periods of seven years. Now, if you take that as symbolically um, paradigmatic, uh, actually you will find that there are correspondences all across that century of history. So um, uh, you find that, I have an article on this, I'm not gonna go into every aspect of why this is the case. If you wanna look at the article, you can go to my blog and see it. Um, this kind of way of looking at the correspondence of uh, the history of the Old Testament to the history of the fourth century, you take that as true. It also matches the death of Julian the apostate and the inheritance of the Roman Empire officially under the Emperor Theodosius. Point is, there are and there is an innate significance to why God manages history the way uh, that He does. Um, crud. <laughs> oh, uh, oh yes, yes, yes. Okay, so um, we all, and that's true on the big scale and the small scale for every single one of us individually. Well, uh, so I think what feast days were born on. That's important. It, it can say something about us. Um, I found uh, that a very important step in my conversion to orthodoxy um, in 2009 actually happened. I think it was on or the day before the Feast of St. Seraph and Masarov. I only discovered this years later, but he's my patron saint. I felt called by St. Seraphim to make him my patron, which is kind of curious because St. Seraphim and me, our personalities are not that much alike, if at all. Um, uh, but I just felt summoned by him to, um, to, to become his disciple after a fashion. Uh, the curse screwed icon of the mother of God 
um, is important to both St. Seraphim and um, St. John Maximovich. Well, you see, there is a, a copy of the Curse Grid icon right there. I did not buy that. I was given that by someone, someone I didn't really actually know that well. Icons have a tendency of coming to you. Um, it's, it's, it's quite interesting. Um, and you can be the means by which someone else gets an icon. So buy people icons. Uh, if, they're, if they're Orthodox, if you know they're, they're going to treat them with, with reverence, with respect. Anyway, um, I was born on the feast day of, uh, of St. Gregory Palamas, um, the uh, Lenten feast of St. Gregory Palamas, March 14th, 1993, uh, which is so interesting because Palamas is both spiritually and uh, theologically very important to me. Um, and one of my big interests is, you know, our engagement, both critical and appreciative, with Western Christianity. And I found that I was actually made a reader um, on the feast day of St. Mark of Ephesus the other day. I found this. Um, so... I've got two of the three pillars of orthodoxy, though. I don't remember why I started talking about this. Um, 